as a sin offering, 12. Uh, do you see anything there? Yeah, 12. And that's where the Lord began to deal with me about not only the seed that we were to sow together in the heave offering, but that these 12 months were to be months that were dedicated uh, to the Lord. Now, 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 there is a reason for this. There was a reason for this dedication as the Spirit of God illuminated it to me. Now watch this. Look at verse 88. And all the oxen for the sacrifice of the peace offerings were 24 bulls, the ram 60, the male goat 60, the lamb of the first year 60. This was the dedication offering for the altar after it was anointed. Look at what happens. Look at verse number 89. Now when Moses went into the tabernacle of meeting to speak with him, so after the offering, after the dedication, after the anointing, when Moses went into the tabernacle of meeting to speak with him, that's a capital him, meeting Elohim, Yahweh, yad heh vav -Heh, Hashim. When he went in to speak with him, watch this, he heard the voice of one. Ah. Notice that one is capitalized there. He heard the voice of one speaking to him from above the mercy seat that was on the ark of the testimony from between the two cherubim. Thus he spoke to him. Everybody say, he heard the voice of one. And the Spirit of the Lord illuminated that to me. And when I read it, it's like it rose up, up off the page to me. And when the Lord began to deal with me about this season of dedication, he shared with me, and I shared this on New Year's Eve, that the dedication was, that, that he was calling us to, was a dedication to the warfare and the reweaponizing. I've talked about the warfare and the reweaponizing, God reweaponizing his army, us making sure we're in the right fight. The fight of faith that we're not wrestling devils and demons and yokes and bondages. They have been defeated. So a part of what God is doing right now with his remnant church, with his army, is he is re-weaponizing them and getting them in the right fight and empowering them to stay in the right fight. Then the Lord said, the second, which I'll deal with a bit today, is a, a dedication to the word of the Lord. Everybody say, a dedication to the word of the Lord. And when I say the word of the Lord, I mean both the logos of God and the rhema of God. And then thirdly, a dedication to the worship experience, God said. These are going to be critical, he said, to uh, the remnant church now as we go into 2024. A dedication to the warfare and the weaponizing. A dedication to the word of God and a dedication to the worship experience, which I'll deal with as we go into vision month next month, but a dedication to the worship experience for the harvest, not just for you. And we'll deal with that a little more. But the Lord said to me, he said, he said I need you to deal with this, this dedication to the Word of God. Now, let's qualify a couple of terms here before I get into this. And I won't be extremely long, but I got to get, I got to get this to you. This word dedication, you, you'll find two Hebrew words that are translated dedicate, dedication. One is the Hebrew word kadesh, which means to consistently make clean or to pronounce or observe as clean. So once a thing was dedicated to the Lord, the thing was pronounced clean and consistently maintained and or observed as clean. Now that is one of the words that is often used in uh, the Old Covenant for dedicate. But here in number seven and elsewhere, the, the Hebrew word here is Hanukkah. Not Hanukkah like the celebration, but Hanukkah, C-H-A-N-U-K-K-A-H, uh, which has to do with the initiation or consecration of a thing. The initiation of a thing or the consecration of a thing, a place, or a person. It comes from the Hebrew root Hanak, which means, watch this now, to narrow, to discipline, to train up. And it comes from this root word, which actually, mean, which actually means, in its very foundational element, watch this, to throttle 
or to choke oneself with a rope. Which is not an inference to suicide, <laughs> but more an inference to restriction. It, 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 are, are you in the room? Are you in the room? Are you in the room? So, so, so it has to do well, to kind of means to narrow, to discipline, to train up from uh, from uh, the foundation. To throttle or to choke oneself. It's Greek equivalent. The Greek equivalent of this word in scripture is the Greek word nekroo, from which we get our word necromancer, necromancy, necrophilia. It has to do with death or putting to death. It is used in Colossians 3. Go there real quickly. I'm, I'm going somewhere with this. Just stay with me. Just stay with me. Because uh, we're talking about dedication. See, the, let, me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me run ahead just a little bit and come back. See, one of the aspects of dedication is to narrow your option. See, when you are dedicated to a thing, there are certain things that are no longer even options for you. Or temptations for you. Uh, look, at, look at Colossians chapter 3. This is the, the, the Greek equivalent of this word dedicate. And when you see how it's used here, it will help shed a little light on where we're going. Because now we're talking about, we're talking about now a dedication to the word of God. Watch this. Uh, Colossians chapter 3 mm, and verse uh, number 5. It says, therefore, put to death your members which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. It, it says put to death. The, 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 this is this Greek word necro, uh, the, the equivalent of, of this uh, Hebrew word kana. It literally means, watch this, to deaden, to subdue. It is the same Greek word that is used in Hebrews eleven twelve and Romans 4, 19, both of which refer to the state of Abraham's body when by all natural accounts, the life that was required to produce a child with Sarah had left his body. You're not listening to what I'm saying. It, it, it is the same word. What when, when, when is it? When, when, when in Hebrews 12, it says, therefore, from one man and him as good as dead. That's that word. We're born as many as the stars. Or Romans 4:19, and he not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body now dead. In other words, it means to have the life drained out. Y'all aren't hearing me. It means to let the life drain out. So watch it, watch it, watch it. Watch what the scripture is telling you when it's telling you here in Colossians 3. This is not the message, but it'll help you understand. When it tells you, put to death your members, fornication, uncleanness. What he's saying is, you let the life drain out of it. No, you're, you're not getting it. In other words, I'm not going to kill it. See, we want God to kill stuff. Kill fornication. Kill lust. Kill uncleanness. God said, I'm not going to kill it. I made you a new creation so you could drain the life out of it. Oh, God. You know, you didn't hear me. He's telling you, let the life drain out of it. In other words, remove yourself from the things that stimulate it and you won't even have a temptation for it. Stop exposing yourself to certain things and you won't have certain confusion, certain temptation. I'll never forget when the Lord taught me early. He said, he said son, you notice that when, when Potiphar's wife started coming after Joseph, he didn't get on his knees and pray. He 
ran. Because he knew prayer wasn't going to keep him away from whatever she had. Ain't nobody saying nothing to me. Sit down. <laughs> or smile. In other words, there are certain things when you get that far. Ain't no need in asking the Lord to come see about you. you Now, thank God there is grace and mercy. Thank God for all of that. But we're talking about now taking the steps. Are you still here? I, I'll teach on that another day when I teach in that area. But it literally means, watch this, to drain the life out, to throttle, to choke oneself with a rope. And one of the things that God was saying now, uh, as he was dealing with me about this, he said, son, he, he said, uh, this is one of the things that my remnant church now is going to have to do concerning my word. They're going to have to choke themselves, if you will, with a rope to make sure that they are not siding with all of this doctrine and these seducing spirit and these devil. You and I now are going to have to make up our minds that God's word is true. I heard one so-called man of God, I'm not going to call any names, talk about that, that the word of God was not infallible. He said anyone who says the word of God is infallible hasn't read it all. Well, I've read it all. And let me tell you, it is infallible. It is inerrant. It is inspired. It is irrevocable. It is the living word of God and it will not change. The problem, if you think God's word is full of error, it's because you are attempting to understand a spiritual thing with a carnal mind. This is why the scripture Paul says, I pray for you that you be filled with the knowledge of God's will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Not educational understanding, not intellectual understanding, not etymological understanding, spiritual. Quiet, quiet in the room. And the Lord said this to me. He, he, he said to me, he said, and as I was studying this, the Lord said to me, he, the, the word of the Lord came to me prophetically. And he said, you're now about to see a confrontation that will arise among the prophets. He said, do not be alarmed nor confused, nor be, do not be shaken or rattled, for this too must be. He said, you shall see it begin between those who are hearing the word at my mouth and those who are professional pulpiteers. He said, you'll begin to see a confrontation between those who are speaking from divine revelation and those who are speaking from divine reserves. See, some people are speaking from divine revelation and others are speaking from divine reserve. In other words, God said something to them 10 years ago. <laughs> and they're preaching reservation knowledge, not revelation knowledge. Are you still here? He, he said, yes. The word, well, well, let me, let me, let me, let me go, go, go to Ezekiel. Go to Ezekiel. When the Lord told me to do this, I said, God, you're going to have to organize this because the way you're talking to me is everywhere. He said, well, I'll organize it. You just open your mouth and I'll fill it. So, so, so I'm coming at it. And I, I, I'll, I'll take 30 minutes. Uh, and be done. Now look at Ezekiel chapter 13. 
See, because, ah. see this, this, is, this is war. This, I told you we're at war. I, I told you that God is re-weaponizing his army. And you're about to see some things that will seem unspiritual, maybe even unscriptural to those who don't know scripture. That are going to happen in the house of God. That's why God is saying, don't be shaken, don't be moved. I'll read the rest of the prophetic word in just a minute. But you got to see these things from the scripture. Look at Ezekiel 13, 1. And the word of the Lord came to me. This is Ezekiel. Who is Ezekiel? Well, what is Ezekiel? Oh, he's a prophet of God. Okay. So the word of the Lord came to me, a prophet, saying, son of man, prophesy against the prophet. So, so the word of the Lord comes to one prophet, saying, prophet, prophesy against the prophets of Israel who prophesy and say to those who prophesy out of their own heart. In other words, there are people prophesying out of their heart. They're not saying what I'm saying. They're saying what they think. They're saying what they learned in seminary. They're mixing sociology, psychology, and theology, trying to entertain or keep an audience. And God says to his prophet Ezekiel, now I need you to say something about that. Watch. Thus says the Lord God. Woe to the foolish prophets who follow their own spirit and have seen nothing. Everybody look right up here at me. See, I've said to you for years, the prophetic function is not a speaking function. The prophetic function is a seeing function. The prophet of the old covenant was called a seer, not a talker. And if you are not seeing things... You should keep your mouth shut. Quiet in the building. Thus says the Lord God. Woe to the foolish prophets who follow their own spirit and have seen nothing. O oh Israel, your prophets are like foxes in the desert. The, the message translation and the NIV translation say, your prophets are like jackals scavenging through ruins. In other words, they're looking through old messages, seeing if they can get a word from God. Ain't nobody saying that to me. They're online trying to find out what's popular to say. Ain't nobody saying that to me. I don't care. You don't have to like me. You don't have to like me. Turn me off. He, he said they're, they're like scavengers. Going through ruins, looking for something to say or preach without a living word. Without inspiration, without revelation. No, 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 watch it. Watch it. What's the real problem here? You have not gone up into the gaps to build a wall for the house of Israel to stand in battle on the day of the Lord. Here's what he's saying. He said, the reason I got to deal with this now is because it's wartime and you're supposed to be equipping my people to do battle against the forces that are coming against it and you are fighting each other about how you're having church. You're supposed to be equipping my people. It's a day of battle. Devils are assailing them. Spirits are seducing them. Lying devils are overwhelming them. Sicknesses and diseases are attacking them. And you're fighting over who's got the biggest this. Still here? You've not gone up into the gaps? To build a wall for the house of Israel to stand in the day of battles, 
in the day of the battle of the Lord. In other words, you have not equipped my people for the day of battle. So the assignment in this hour, in this season, is to be going into the gap and building the walls for the people of God to stand in in the time of battle. What does that mean? It means in part to find the word of the Lord that God's people are to be standing on, decreeing, and declaring in the day of battle. Look at verse 6. They have envisioned futility and false divination, saying, Thus says the Lord, but the Lord has not sent them. <laughs> Thus says the Lord, but the Lord has not sent them. Yet they hope that the word may be confirmed. Saying that I hope, I hope God comes through on this. I hope this gets results. Touch your neighbor and say, no more shooting blanks around here. No more. You're going to say something to me. I want something that's going to work. Watch this. Watch this now. Uh, uh, he says, I'm not, yet they hope that the word may be confirmed. He says, have you not seen a futile vision? And have you not spoken false divination? You say the Lord says, but I have not spoken. Therefore thus says the Lord, because you have spoken nonsense and envision lies. Therefore I am indeed against you, says the Lord God. My hand will be against the prophets who envision futility and who divine lies they shall not be in the assembly of my people. So that means there's some stuff that's either going to shut down or some people that are about to be removed from places of influence and authority because it is not talent or oration or visibility. It is now, are you equipping my people to stand in the day of battle and to do what needs to be done for the advance of the kingdom. Are you still in the room? Nudge your neighbor and say, uh, he'll be done in just a minute. Some of you don't believe it, so you didn't say it. <laughs> Go to Jeremiah 27. I told the Lord I had been over this. He said, Go over it again. He said, go over it again. He said, because the people are about to see it. And they need to understand what they are seeing when they see it. And they need to understand it's not devils. It's not confusion. It is me cleaning my house. Ay -ay. It, it, is, it is me setting the stage for a whole new wave of glory and power and anointing that is going to go through my house. Are you still here? And I said, Lord, we've been over this before. He said, go over it again. Jeremiah 27, 14. God is speaking to his prophet Jeremiah. Ah. I'm trying to do it again. Mm. Uh, well, okay, let me, let, me, let me read it and then I'll go back. God is speaking to his prophet Jeremiah, verse 14, chapter 27. Therefore, do not, less, do not listen to the words of the prophets who speak to you. Say, God is literally telling his people, stop listening to this. Stop, that, see, this is what I'm talking about, a dedication to the Word of God. Yeah. Choking yourself, restricting yourself, making sure that if you are hearing something, it is that which is bearing witness with your spirit and what God is saying to you. Are you in the room? Therefore do not listen to the words of the prophets who speak to you, saying you shall not serve the king of Babylon. For they prophesy a lie to you. For I have not sent them, says the Lord. 
yet they prophesy a lie in my name. I want you to see a lie in my name. Because a lie in my name literally means they have authority, but what they're saying is not from me. Mm. They promise I lie in my name that I may drive you out and that you may perish, you and the prophets who prophesy to you. Also the Lord spoke to the priests and to all these people saying, thus says the Lord, do not listen to the words of your prophets who prophesy to you saying, behold, the vessels of the Lord's house will now shortly be brought back from Babylon. Oh, I need you to, I need you to understand this. I need you to understand this. What had happened here? Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, had come into Jerusalem and destroyed it, sacked it at the word of the Lord. Israel believed that because they were God's people, no foreign king could come in and destroy the temple and take the vessel. Now remember, what the vessels of ministry are. In the old covenant, they were the gold and silver vessels, the utensils, the, the, the bowls, the cups, and all the things that were used in the worship. In the new covenant, the vessels of ministry are preachers, teachers, people of God. They are the vessels God uses. And what has happened here is the vessels of ministry have been taken captive by an alien spirit. Not the spirit of Jehovah. Are you in the room or what? And there are prophets that were prophesying, saying, well, that's not going to last too long. God's going to deliver. And God said, no, 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 I'm going to let him stay over there. Are you still here? Are you still here? Watch this. Verse 18. But it, well, let, let, let's go up to verse 1. Let's go up to verse 1 of the same chapter so you understand the context. Verse number 1. In the beginning of the reign of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, the word came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Thus says the Lord to me, Make for yourselves bonds and yokes and put them on your neck and send them to the king of Edom, to the king of Moab. He tells them to send them all around. Now watch this. Go down to verse 6. And say, and say, now I have given all these lands into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, my servant. In other words, Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, was, was the vessel that God was going to use to judge his people. So he tells his prophet, Jeremiah, he says, get a yoke, put it on your neck, and walk around. Israel and send it to the kings of Edom. Walk around and tell them that the king of Babylon is coming and he's going to put a yoke on the neck of everybody in Israel until you all repent and get right. He says, I've ordained 70 years for him to rule. years. Now watch what happens. This is Jeremiah's message. How many of you know, that'll clear your church out pretty quick. (laughs) People won't be flocking to hear that. They're going to go to the guy who tell them they're going to get a car in the next 70 days. (laughs) That God's going to pay off your bills as soon as you put this oil on your wallet. Are you still here? But, 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 but Jeremiah has heard from God. His message is not popular, but it's truth. It's not the one that people will flock to a conference to hear. But it is what God is saying in that hour. Are you still here? So he, he tells Jeremiah, Go and say this, 
And then look at verse 9. He says, therefore, do not listen to your prophets, your diviners, your dreamers, your soothsayers, your sorcerers. I want you to notice he puts the prophets and the sorcerers in the same camp. And the reason he puts the prophets and the sorcerers in the same camp is neither the prophets nor the sorcerers are speaking by the Holy Spirit. So whatever spirit they're speaking by, it's not God. So God says, they're all together as far as I'm concerned. Are you still here? You see, people didn't understand this when I talked about okay, well, that God was judging the spirit of witchcraft and I talked about things in churches and pulpits. It's not that they're witches or they're warlocks, but God is not judging people. He's dealing with spirits. And if you are dealing with any spirit other than his to move his people, he's dealing with that. Are you still here? So that's why he says, don't listen to your prophets who are telling you otherwise. Now, go to chapter 28, Jeremiah. And it happened, verse number one, in the same year. So Jeremiah has been preaching this message now for a few months. It's been his assignment for at least 12 months. He, he was off the conference list. <laughs> you better not, better not invite Jeremiah. He ain't going to help you raise no money. No, don't, don't invite Jeremiah. Jeremiah, will, he'll come in there and everybody will leave. You still here? Watch this. And it happened in the same year at the beginning of the reign of Zedekiah, king of Judah, in the fourth year and in the fifth month that Hananiah the son of Azur the prophet. So his dad was a prophet, and he is in the lineage of the prophetic, who was from Gibeon, spoke to me in the house of the Lord, in the presence of the priests and all the people. Thus speaks the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, saying, I have broken the yoke of the king of Babylon. Within two full years, I will bring back to the place all the vessels of the Lord's house. Are you still here? So Hananiah has heard Jeremiah's message. See, I'm talking about a confrontation of prophets. See, it's not, it's not name calling. It's messages conflicting. See, it's not calling each other's names out. It's there's now going to be a conflict of messages. He that has ears to hear, let him hear. There's going to be a conflict of messages coming out of the house. And you're going to have to discern who has the word of the Lord in their mouth and who does not. He says, I've broken. So he's seen Jeremiah walking around with this thing. Now watch what happened. Watch. He says, I've broken the yoke of the king of Babylon within two full years. I will bring all the vessels back. Now, Jeremiah had said 70 years. This is going to go, happen for 70 years. The king of Babylon is going to rule Israel and all these nations. 70 years. And Hananiah gets on his radio broadcast. He's the next one on TV in the next 30 minutes. And he gets on. And says, don't listen to Jeremiah. Within two more years, this will be over. Are you there? Are you there? Verse number five. Then the prophet Jeremiah spoke to the prophet Hananiah. In the presence of the priests and the presence of all the people who stood in the house of the Lord. And the prophet Jeremiah said, okay, amen. The Lord do so. And the Lord perform your words, which you have prophesied, to bring back the vessels of the Lord's house and all who are carried away cattle from Babylon. Nevertheless, hear now this word that I speak in your hearing and in the hearing of all the people. The prophets who have been before me, uh, prophesied before old, uh, uh, prophesied against many kingdoms, 
of war, disaster, pestilence, as for the prophet who prophesies of peace, then the word of the prophet comes to pass. That prophet will be, will be known as one whom the Lord has truly sent. In other words, he's saying, okay, uh, if, you're, if you're speaking from God, let your word be confirmed. Well, we, we don't have to fight about this. Well, let's see. Watch. Then Hananiah the prophet took the yoke off the prophet Jeremiah's back and broke it. So Jeremiah had been commissioned to give an illustrated sermon everywhere he went with this yoke on saying, this is what's about to happen. Hananiah comes, takes the yoke off of Jeremiah that God told him to put on. To illustrate the message that God is sending to his people. And Hananiah comes and I feel the Holy Ghost all over me. Hananiah took the, took, Hananiah brought, took the yoke off the prophet Jeremiah's back neck and broke it. And Hananiah spoke in the presence of all the people saying, Thus says the Lord, even so, I will break the yoke of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, from the neck of all the nations within the space of two full years. And the prophet Jeremiah went his way. Jeremiah didn't want to fight. He's got the word of the Lord. But... He's on his way out, and as he's walking away, the word of the Lord comes to him. Are y'all here? After Hananiah the prophet had broken the yoke from the neck of the prophet Jeremiah, saying, go and tell Hananiah. In other words, Jeremiah is actually trying to avoid the confrontation, and God says to him, go back and talk to him. And I am telling you as a prophet of God, this is about to happen in the household of faith. God is going to raise up some voices that are going to confront some other voices. And there's going to be conflict. But God says, don't be shaken. It's not the devil. Are you still here? Watch this. He said, go and tell Hananiah. Thus says the Lord, you have broken the yokes of wood, but you have made in their place yokes of iron. Translation, you put on a good show, but you've actually done more harm than good. Are you still here? For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, I have put a yoke of iron on the neck of all these nations that they may serve Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and they shall serve him. I have given him the beast also of the field. Then the prophet Jeremiah said to Hananiah, the prophet, here now, Hananiah, the Lord has not sent you. Now see, if a prophet said that to another prophet in today's church, we would think, But if you see it in your Bible, look at your neighbor and say, if you see it in your Bible, then your God does it. <laughs> then the prophet Jeremiah said to Hananiah, the prophet, here now, Hananiah, the Lord has not sent you, but you make this people trust in a lie. Why? See, God has given you visibility. He has given you credibility. He has given you notoriety. He has given you influence. And you are saying things he is not saying. Therefore, you are causing the people who hear you to trust in a lie. Therefore, thus, uh, this is a serious thing. It is a serious thing to say you are speaking on God's behalf. Don't play with it. God has not sent you, but you make these people trust in a lie. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, behold, I will cast you from the face of the earth. This year you shall die because you have 
taught rebellion against the Lord. So you weren't telling people to deny God. You weren't telling people to walk away from God. You weren't telling people not to serve God. You were just using your platform, your influence, your visibility, and your notoriety to say what you won't said other than what God was telling you to say. You will die because you have taught rebellion against the Lord. So Hananiah the prophet died the same year in the seventh month. And the word of the Lord came to me and he said, you're going to now see a confrontation that will arise among the prophets. Do not be alarmed nor confused. Be not shaken nor rattled, for this too must be. You shall see it begin between those who are hearing the word at my mouth and those who are professional pulpiteers, between those who are speaking from divine revelation and those who are speaking from divine reserves. Yes, for the word of the Lord was rare. For, yes, for as the word of the Lord was rare in the time when I raised up my prophet Samuel, so shall it be in these days. Put up 1 Samuel chapter number 1. Put up 1 Samuel chapter number 1. I'm going to read. Musicians, get up here. Put up 1 Samuel chapter 1. 1 Samuel chapter 1. I didn't give you this. I'm going by Revelation. Uh, 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 no, I, no, go to, go, I'm sorry, 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 1. 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 1. My apologies. Put it up. I'll be done in a minute. 1 Samuel chapter 3, it says, Now the boy Samuel ministered to the Lord before Eli, and the word of the Lord was rare in those days. There was no widespread revelation. When God raises up Samuel the prophet, he's a boy. He's going to be the major prophet of the land. And when God raises up Samuel in Eli's house, Eli is a priest who has gotten fat in his position. He is no longer seeking God, no longer serving God. He has two sons, Hophni and Phinehas, who are stealing money and sleeping with the women of the church. And he will not rebuke them. And God sets the boy Samuel under Eli's authority. In other, in other words, Eli, Eli is the priest. Samuel is a young boy prophet that has been dedicated to the Lord. And the Bible says the word of the Lord was rare in those days. There was no widespread revelation. In other words, you couldn't find a word from God easily. Are you still here? I said, are you still here? And so the Lord said, as the word of the Lord was rare in the time when I raised up the prophet Samuel. In other words, there, was, there wasn't a great deal of revelation. So shall it be in these days for a moment, says the Lord. Everybody say, for a moment. But my blacksmiths and my watchmen are now coming forth, says the Lord. Surely they come. And with great power and demonstration they shall come, says the Lord. And there shall be no confusion, says the Lord, as to who I am with. God said in a very short order, it's going to be no confusion who he's with and who he's not with. He said, and there will, shall be no confusion, says the Lord, as to who I'm with. And who stands with me, and who shall have my word in their mouth. Shall I, for I shall confirm my word in their mouth. I need you to hear me. The key in these days is not going to be, was that a good message? It is, is that word being confirmed? Do you see it manifesting? Do you see it coming to pass? Is it producing results? Are people being healed? Are people being prospered? Are people being set free? Are devils coming out screaming? Yeah. 
for I shall confirm my word in their mouths. There is a company I have prepared, says the Lord, and I shall not allow one of their words to fall to the ground. Say this to my people that they be not shaken. Lay your hand up on your brother. Lay your hand up on your sister. The Lord told me to say this so his people aren't shaken. Because there's a few things you're going to see now that are going to shake you if you don't know what is happening. The Lord said, say this to my people that they be not shaken, says the Lord, and to my remnant that they be not moved. Lay your hand on your brother, lay your hand on your sister, tell them I shall not be moved. He said, tell them to stand fast with my high praise in their mouth. And my two-edged sword in their hand. Yeah. If you know your Bible, you know your Bible. You know, you know the Bible talks about with the high praises of God in your mouth and a two-edged sword in your hand, you execute judgment. Uh. He said, tell them to stand fast with my high praises in their mouths and my two-edged sword in their hand, for this is the day I have made. And when the Lord said that to me, he said, I made this day. I, this, this is a day of my doing. I'm doing this. Don't bind the devil. Don't cast him out. It's not him. I'm doing this. I'm preparing my church for the last great revival. I'm preparing my people for a great awakening. I'm preparing my church for a move of my spirit. Don't rebuke the devil. I made this day. Watch it. He said, well, this is the day I've made. And surely my purpose shall be accomplished. And my hand clearly seen. This is the season of the sifting. And the hour of the distinction I told you of concerning the wheat and the tare. But my kingdom children shall begin to shine now as the sun in the kingdom of their God. Comfort my people, the Lord said to me. Comfort my people with these words. I want you to lay your hand upon your brother. Lay your hand upon your sister. Do it. If you're watching me live streaming, I want you to lift your hands right where you are. If there's someone in the room with you, lay your hand upon them. Otherwise, lift your hand where you are. I'm done. I don't know what time it is. My watch stopped. Lay your hands upon yourself I mean lay your hands upon yourself lay your hands upon your brother your sister do that lay your hands on your brother your sister do that and if you pray in the Holy Ghost I want you to pray in the Holy Ghost like many times when the prophetic word comes to you you know some of what you're saying you don't know all of what you're saying I don't know everything that is to come what I do know is the Lord said if my people don't understand that I'm doing it, they'll be shaken. They'll be disturbed. They'll be moved. He said, so tell them, tell them not to be moved and not to be shaken. He said, there's going to be a confrontation in this season of dedication. That's why you're going to have to lock yourself in yeah, to the Word of God. I'm talking about the B-I-B-L-E, yes. The, the living, written Word of God. And you're going to have to know who is speaking on His behalf. God said, my sheep know my voice. And the voice of strangers they will not follow. And in the name of Jesus, I pray for you that are hearing this Word and receiving it. That God will give you supernatural discernment. That you'll be able to see past every devil and lying spirit. Every seducing spirit. No matter what package they come in. 
If it's not God's voice, you'll know it. No matter what it looks like. If it's not God's spirit, you will discern it. Lay your hand on your brother, your sister. Pray in the spirit now. In the name of Jesus, God said to me today, 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 today. He said, I want you to call upon the people who will say with you, we will dedicate ourselves to the word of God. We will agree that God's word is truth. That the Bible is the infallible, irrevocable, inspired, infallible word of the living God. There is no error in it. It is truth. Jesus said, sanctify them by thy truth. Thy word is truth. This spirit has shown up in the church before. It showed up in Spurgeon's day. And Spurgeon said, when they begin to question the infallibility of Scripture, that's when the downgrade will happen. But I am saying in the name of Jesus, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We will preach that book and whatever it says, we will agree with. And whatever it condemns, we will condemn. In the name of Jesus, somebody lift your hand. Yes, God, move it. I need some people who will make a dedication with me right here that if I or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel than that which has been preached let them be a curse I need some people who will agree with me that in this place this place of grace we will not be moved the living word of God we will not question its infallibility its inerrancy its inspiration its irrevocability in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus I feel the Holy Ghost and I will we will not be moved. Lift up your hands in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Spirit of the living God. We here in Los Angeles, California. We put our foot down. And we dedicate ourselves to the word of the Lord, to the logos of God, and to the rhema of God. Your word and what you say. Lift your hands in the name of Jesus. Say out loud, Lord. I dedicate myself, my house, my family, my business to the Word of God, the B-I-B-L-E. Hey, watch them, watch them, watch them. There's power here. Watch them, watch them, watch them. There's power here. Woo! Watch him. There's power here. In the name of Jesus, receive. 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 The anointing of the remnant. Receive. 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 
receive the anointing of dedication. Receive it. I declare to you, as one of his sheep, you will know his voice. And you will not follow the voice of a stranger. Yeah. Watch him. Every seducing spirit. Watch him. Watch him. Watch him. Watch him. Hey. 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 Watch him. Watch him. Watch him. Hey. Help. 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 Watch him. Hey, I'm okay. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, right here, we put our foot down. Woo! Watch up, watch up, watch up. Hey! 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 Come on, lift your hands, whatever you are. Shabakata. There it is, receive that. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Watch him, watch him, watch him, watch him. Pow! Pow! Yeah. Hey! Hey! <laughs> Send your word, Lord. <laughs> Send your word, Lord. <laughs> Send, send your word, Lord. Hey! Send your word, Lord. Send your word, Lord. Send it through here. Send it through here. Whatever you want to say, say it to us. Whatever you want to do, do it through us. Yeah. Hey, oh God. Hey, God.
Lift your hands up. this this morning when I was in prayer I saw the Lord said I want you to call the people and I want you to dedicate yourselves to my word and I want you to lift your hands because God has surely seen and heard the cry that has come up from this place. It's not of my doing, but it is the Lord's doing. Lift your hands and just say this after me. Say, Lord, Send your word here. Yes, yeah, say, say, send your word here. We will receive it. We will hear it with your help. We will walk in it. We will not take away from it. We will not add to it. We just want your word, your voice. We receive it. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Now lift your hands. Father, I pray that there not be one person under the sound of my voice here or watching me wherever they may be anywhere in the world that there not be one that they their children their children's children the third and fourth generation and beyond that not one of them will be deceived or lost I declare no strange voice shall lead them astray I declare no seducing spirit or doctrine of devil will take them away from the truth of your word. Lift your hands up. I pray a supernatural spirit of discernment will be on this people. Under the sound of my voice, you know who they are. You You know where they are. You know everything that belongs to them. And I declare nothing of theirs shall be lost in this hour. In the name of Jesus. And if you agree with that, just lift your voice and begin to thank God for it. Uh, 
lay your hand on your brother or your sister and tell them nothing of yours shall be lost. No one in your house, no one connected to your lineage that you pray for shall be lost. And I declare to you in the name of Jesus, you shall not be moved. In Jesus' name, amen. Clap your hands and give God praise. Before you do anything else, I was sorely tempted while the glory of God was moving here to just leave. I really was. So that when you came out from under that, you wouldn't see me at all. But then the Lord said to me, no, stay. I want you to lay your hands upon yourself. I'm going to minister communion to you and we're going to go. I want as many of you as are led by the Spirit of God and those of you watching me live streaming. I want as many of you as are led by the Spirit of God to go to your seat and then to bring an offering and lay it on this altar. I want as many of you as can to sow a seed of at least a hundred dollars and lay it on this altar. That's what I heard. I don't want to pass plates. I want people to come and lay an offering as a dedication on this altar where we just made a dedication before the Lord. If you're going to do it in some other way, technology, if you're going to do it some other way, do it. But let me go ahead and take the moment. If you're watching me live streaming because you can't get here, right there on your computer screen, right there on your smartphone, there's a way for you to sow. Now listen to me. I really don't even feel like receiving an offering right now. I just want to leave because the glory of God is that rich in this room. But there are some actions of faith in the glory. Somebody say acting in the glory. There's, there's some actions of faith in the glory that are significant for some people to make. There's some people, thank you, Master. There's some people under the sound of my voice that in the last few minutes a shackle got broken. There's some people under the sound of my voice that in the last few moments something that was held up of yours got released and you will see it in the next three to seven days. I'm telling you, as, as certainly as I'm talking here, there will be testimonies from this room and from you watching me. So if the Spirit of God is leading you to do it, I want you to, uh, I want you to get a seed and I want you to sow it. And some of you, God is speaking to you to sow something significant. Right there on your computer screen, right there on your smartphone, there's a donate button, there's a way for you to sow. I want you to do it. You can text give CEMM to 41444. You can call the number on the screen, 310-323-2600. Call the number and sow your seed, or you can give it through the app. If you don't have it, you can download it at iTunes or Google. Listen to you. Those of you that are in this room, I want you to get something, and I want you to get up here and sow it. If it's $100, if it's 100 pennies, if God is speaking to you to do something, I want you to get up here, and I want you to lay it on this altar. I am telling you in the name of Jesus, as surely as I am standing here, there is a glory emanating from this altar right now. I sense the wind of God moving even around my being. I'm not exaggerating. 
There is angelic movement in the house and something supernatural is occurring in the realm of the spirit. I want you to go ahead and sow as the spirit of God directs you. Do it in Jesus name. Whatever he's telling you to do. Holy Almighty Worthy is the Lamb Worthy is the Lamb You are Holy Are you Lord God are holy some of you are sowing your heave offering today if the spirit of God is leading you to do it get it down here or sow it there it's important you get it in this month worthy you are holy Are you Lord God? Hallelujah. Have you given? If you've done what the Lord told you to do, just lift your hands. Father, I agree in the name of Jesus that there will be no lack in this house and no lack in your house. In the name of Jesus, say this out loud in favor in finance in things being added to me I am increasing I have dedicated myself and my house to the Word of God in Jesus name clap your hands and thank you I want you to get the communion element and I want us to agree I, 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 I sense this so strongly and I won't belabor the moment anymore there is a pulling away from the Word of God that even men and women that you never thought it would happen to you're going to see it begin to happen are you listening to me and the spirit of god is looking for a people who will anchor themselves to and in God's Word. See, I made up my mind. <laughs> I made up my mind years ago. I know it now by experience, not just by faith. I know it now by experience that every word of God is true. I know it. Do you understand? I know it. But I made up my mind years ago that the Word was truth. Jesus said it. So it didn't take much for me to believe it. But I decided that anywhere 
that I did not understand or agree with God's word. I made up my mind, the word is right. And I'm the one who has to change. <laughs> and here's what I'll tell you unequivocally. If you'll do that, there is nothing in God's word that you need to know that he won't show you. He'll explain to you things that are hidden from most people. He, he'll, he'll show you where what you thought was contradictory actually makes absolutely flawless sense and faith. Do you hear me? And so as we receive and minister communion, I want us to agree that anything and everything we need to know in and through the word God will show us come on say amen to that but we're first of all going to agree the word is truth and wherever we disagree then we have to change now if you're not willing to agree with that it's going to be tough for you to hang out with us are you there? Lift the bread and say, Lord, Lord I, receive I receive your body given for me. And I declare in the name of Jesus, your word is truth. And I boldly confess wherever I or anyone else disagrees with your word your word is truth and you are not going to change it we are the ones who have to change can you agree with that let's all eat together lift the cup and remember Jesus said concerning the cup that it is the new covenant in his blood and when you and I partake of this we are declaring that every benefit every attribute every blessing of the new covenant and the finished work of Jesus is ours including the right and the privilege to know the truth and the truth make us free Lift the cup and say, Lord, I receive every benefit, every blessing, every attribute of the new covenant and the new creation, including the benefit of knowing the truth and the truth making me free. I receive it in Jesus' name. Let's all drink together. And the people said, would you clap your hands and thank the Lord for his goodness? Look at that. Lift your hands where you are. Say these words after me, Lord Jesus, you are the reconciler. You are the one who has made us one again with God the Father. Your death paid my sin debt in full and your resurrection is my receipt. It is my evidence that your sacrifice on my behalf was accepted. Therefore I am accepted. I am not merely a forgiven sinner. I am a new creation in Christ Jesus. Everything your word says about me is true. I receive it in Jesus' name. Amen.
Clap your hands and thank the Lord. If you prayed that prayer here or there, the work is already done. Write me and let me know. Lift your hands. Father, I pray a hedge of protection in the north, the south, east, and west around this people, their household, their family, all they have on every side. I declare everything their hands touch prospers. I declare they continue to increase in the land which you give us. And we boldly confess the angels of the Lord encamp round about us and they deliver us because we are those that fear the Lord in the name of Jesus. And the people said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you by his grace at the place of grace Thursday night prayer. I'll see you here.